Welcome into Turn 2 with Scott and Troy. Awesome show ahead for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. We have a super unique guest joining us here on our next episode. It is Christian O'Kelly, the clubhouse manager with the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Christian, first off, I want to say I appreciate you making the time for us because a lot of people would think when we're recording this, 1.15 on a Wednesday, the game doesn't start until 7.05. I mean... There's plenty of time in the mm-hmm. in the day. There's not plenty of time for <laughs> you in the middle of a homestand. You're making time for us. Thank you so much. For those who don't know what a clubhouse manager is, you are like this unknown job that is so important in the baseball world. What do you do and how do you spend your time and why is 115 normally on a Wednesday so busy and you wouldn't be able to talk with us? So first of all, I want to say thanks to both of you guys for having me on air. Um, obviously, when you guys started this podcast to start the season, I thought it was a great thing, not only for you guys, but for the brand of baseball and bringing it to Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. I think it's a really good thing. So I want to say thank you for having me on. And actually, it's funny because this time's like normally a dead period for me. I come in early in the morning. Like today I got in around 9 a.m., I want to say. We'll come in. We'll get the towels folded from the night before, make sure all the uniforms are set, for today's game, make sure all the pants are clean, uh, laundry loops are hung, which for people who don't know what laundry loops are, it's a clip that you clip your clothing on because normally when you're at home, you just you know throw your clothes in the washer. But because I'm taking care of excuse me, 40 different people in a clubhouse, I, it's got, they're all labeled, all numbered. You got to know who's who. So we, throw the, we make sure all the loops are hung. All the laundry's done. All the water's restocked in the coaches' fridges. Trash is taken out. Areas are clean. Cleats are clean from the night before. All sorts of stuff. Um, it, it's really hard to f- explain in terms to people who don't know equipment staff or have been in, like, a clubhouse setting. It's it's more than that, though, too, I think. That's just your basic yeah, morning, that's day, right? Yeah, that's, that's day-to-day essentials. I also deal with being the... Home clubhouse manager, I also deal with uh, tracking equipment for the guys, making sure that there's baseballs ordered for the game, of course, because you can't play a game of baseball without the balls. Um, Also, um, making sure that the dugouts are clean, coolers are prepped, towels are out. Everything to make these guys' life easier, that's what we do in the clubhouse. I'm I'm not... I'm not going to lie, I don't think that, and I told you this earlier, I don't think we could do what we do without you and your staff. Mm -hmm. You guys are an incredible group of people. You are incredibly caring, and the fact that you guys have so much fun, that (laughs) when you guys, you guys come in with a smile, you guys are joking around, you're laughing, and at the same time, it's like, hey, can I get a pair of socks? And you're like, yep, no problem. I got it. Give me two seconds. I'll go find you one. What size are you? Anything like that. Like, the stuff behind the scenes, everybody always sees, you know, mm-hmm. the, the players on the field, the plays, everything like that. But realistically, nobody knows what happens behind the yeah. scenes. I always have people reaching out like, oh, okay, hey, do you want to go grab lunch at like 5 o'clock? I'm like, no, I, I got to be the field at, you know, yeah, 2 yeah. o'clock, something like that. We're prepping and everything like that. But you guys do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You're on the same schedule. And even like you told me last night, you had to drive somebody to the airport at wh- – what time was that? Uh, I got up at 5.30. This morning, I didn't get home till 1.30 at night last night. So, I'm on three hours of sleep. Excuse me, by the way. I have a little bit of a dry mouth right now. Is it the mustache? Mustache and the beard going in. (laughs) (laughs) Is it it all maybe some food left over? I think so. I don't know if it's the wind up here, but I'm trying to talk, (laughs) and I can't talk. So, I'm very sorry to all the viewers on the mic or whatever. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, no. It's not much sleep. It's long hours. But we try to have a great time with it. It's a very unique job. Obviously, you know, we get to be around professional athletes on a day-to-day basis. Uh, I get to come in and, you know, do honestly what I love. I never thought I'd be in the position I am today, but I'm very thankful for it. So tell me a little bit about your backstory. I know this Mm -hmm. is... The most interesting thing is how people got into their okay. job, how people got into their – so start – did you play sports when yes. you were in high school, when you were a kid? So I grew up playing baseball, golf, and basketball. Surprisingly, basketball, I know. Um, what are you, 4'9"? <laughs> <laughs> I felt 4'9 out there. Yeah, I know, but I played – actually, I went through a 6 through 12 school, so middle school and high school combined, and I ended up 
being on the golf team from 7th grade through 12th, JV 7th through ninth grade, and then varsity baseball 10th through 12th. Um, I ended up going to play college ball for four years. I played at a junior college, Indian River State College in Fort Pierce, Florida, which I'm originally from Port St. Lucie, Florida, which most people know. is the Mets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The uh, St. Lucie Mets are down there. So I went from junior college, got my uh, associate's degree, got a scholarship to go to Flagler College, which is just, just down the road in St. Augustine, Florida, and uh, played two years there. Got my sport management degree. Ended up getting an internship here. And it, I started out as a game day intern, you know, like the people that are scanning tickets. They saw my baseball background, asked me to come down and help rub baseballs, help manage equipment stuff, help load the buses. And I was like, heck, this sounds fun. Ended up getting into it. The visiting guy left in 2021. They needed a new guy. So I stepped in, and next thing you know, three years later, I'm here. I'm, I'm the home, home guy. I work directly with Miami now, the Marlins, and it, it's been a blast. That's awesome. What uh, – that is a really – I want to say that is really cool. That's like literally starting from the bottom. Yeah, no, that's what to, a lot of people say. Working, working through, like I, I'd love – for that to be a story for a lot of baseball <laughs> players. <but> well, <laughs> and the cool thing about it is that the, you, you didn't go on, like you didn't go on LinkedIn and yeah. look for a job opening, right? You didn't go on Indeed. You you had a connection. Mm -hmm. You got an internship because you have a cool background and you're a smart guy. And because you were a hard worker and because people like you, you went from one thing to another. Yeah. That, that to me is the coolest part of this story. Well, I appreciate it. And a lot of it was hard work. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Like like you said, a lot of people don't know the background, what goes into day-to-day -day at the ball field. Most people just show up to the ball field and watch a baseball game. There's a lot of hours being put in, equipment staff, broadcast, coaching staff, players themselves, day-to-day uh, -day workers, anything that goes into sports, there's a lot of work. And starting from an intern position – to the visiting side uh, assistant, to the head visiting guy, to my second year as the head home club clubhouse manager. It's it's been awesome. You know that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I, was, it, I was thinking my track. I know, is I know. Like, I was, it, it, it's crazy how like it just kind of it weaves its way right in mm -hmm. there. You know what I thought was interesting too? I saw a uh, tweet that the actual Miami Marlins have 24 job openings. I saw that. I was just yeah. thinking about that, and. Here at the Jumbo Shrimp, I feel like the staff turnover is I and Scott, you might be able to be a little bit more of an insight onto this, but I feel like the staff turnover is not as much here in Jacksonville as it is maybe at the Miami level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're any organization, right? We were in Nashville last week. We're playing uh, Norfolk this week. You know, every organization they've got the way they manage their people and their different challenges and whatnot. I would think for somebody in, in your position, Christ, Christian, home clubhouse, I think people think of that and they're like, oh, okay, there's going to be, you know, a few roster moves and blah, blah, blah. And But for the most part, I'm going to work with the same 30-ish guys. <laughs> and it's not like that. There's been 75 players this year. We're recording this at the end of August. So that is the second most in franchise history in Jacksonville, 1962 AAA mm -hmm. to present, so the AAA, AA era. And certainly wasn't more than that even before that. 75 players is a lot of people to yeah. deal with. I, th I think that, you know, okay, the visiting side, you're going to deal with a new team every single week. I think people can grasp that. Mm -hmm. But even on the home side, you kind of think as a fan, yeah, you know, Troy's been here all year long. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work with people like that. But there's always turnover. So you're constantly working with different people. I would imagine that's a big challenge. No, it's a, it's a big challenge, especially when – I'm constantly having faces come in and out, you know what I mean? And I got to manage, like I said, equipment is the main thing. Their jerseys, um, I got to make sure that they have pants to wear for the game. All these hats, all the essentials. And when I got guys leaving on the road, sometimes they take the equipment with them and then they come back and I'm missing a jersey and a guy wants to wear number nine. And I'm like, well, I don't have a number nine white jersey. So you're going to have to pick another number. And, uh, yeah, no, it just – it, at this level, too, AAA, because these guys are on the, the brink of making it to the big league. Some guys have showtime. Some guys are top prospects. Some, some guys 
are up and down all year. You never know what you're going to get. And it's, uh, it's like you said, having 75, excuse me, Jesus, different players, it's – Got like the driest throat on earth right now. I think you're nervous. I think mm. yeah, there's no reason to be nervous. <laughs> yes, there is. He's talking, he's talking to guys. Troy and Scott. He's got to be nervous. <laughs> no, no, I feel good. <laughs> to me, to I feel me, good. Nervous. You are the nicest guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, but like you said, the 75 different guys coming in and out. It's it's been a lot, but and it's not just me. I have a great staff down there. You know, Brendan Sweeney. He's a um, a student at UNF. He's in his second year. Great guy. I had another guy that I coached down at Flagler, Jake Hill, he was an intern, uh, Daniel Fisher, an intern, Tyler Keith, he took over the visiting side, Seth Wasaki, another assistant, just giving a quick shout out to all those guys, you guys do a great job in the clubhouse, and I'm very thankful for you guys. I was going to say, they were really asking for a shout out, no, they, they were, were going to be like, hey, <laughs> you got to name drop us, you yeah, have to they, put us yeah, in a podcast, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the thing is, now, now you got to tag them. And now they're going <laughs> to spread the word, and now they're going to be the super yes. famous, and now they're going to be all over Hollywood. Oh, I forgot one. Brad, Bradley Von Drews could just star this week. Brad is and, awesome. Yes, oh, and he's been on my Brad. tail about making sure he gets in this. Bradley, I'm sorry you were the last one said, last but not least, yes. just like Christian said. <laughs> so with that, when you're on the visiting side, mm-hmm. you're dealing with a new team every single week. So what are some of the things you had to do to – uh, a, get ready, okay, you've got to clear out for whoever's leaving and then bring in the new team. And then there's new coaches and yeah. new managers, and I would think that they have different preferences of things that yeah, they Yeah, like so you tend to – you get in contact with the team usually a week prior, and you'll get the food that's coming that week. What I like to do is I like to get a hold of the home clubby and see what their coaching staff liked because I hmm. wanted to make sure – I took care of the coaching staff, especially. And then, uh, obviously, with new players coming in. Excuse me, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, camera. Mm. Water break. Yeah. Easy. Hey, seventh inning stretch right here, huh? Yeah, right. water break. <laughs> no, yeah. But just – but the good thing is, is, like, Norfolk comes back. Charlotte's been here. Nashville's been here. And you get to know the guys. And as long as the staff stays, you have a happy staff, it's usually a pretty happy clubhouse. So, and you just, you just grind it out. You get to know the guys for the week they're there. You figure out what they like, what they don't like. And then the next time they come in, you're on top of it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, you've been dealing with the same staff here in Jacksonville for the last, what, three years? Yeah, three. Yeah. Last three years. And, of course, Darren Brown is an absolute headache to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> so... Shout out to Brownie. Shout out to Brownie. Great guy. Big fan of our podcast. I think. He is a big fan of our podcast. He's secretly, though. He'll never let us know. Yeah. He'll never let us know. But he is a big fan. But dealing with the same guys over and mm-hmm. over again, do you kind of build a relationship with that? Because like we talked about, we've got so many different players coming yeah. in and out. Is, are you closer now with the staff and kind of how they're – because, of course, like you said, the food and everything mm-hmm. like that. You have been unbelievable this year with that. Oh, appreciate that it. That has been – I love I love our home, yes I love our home <laughs> meals I know a lot of, I don't know what the mac and cheese is but that thing is oh. unbelievable last night's mac and cheese oh my yeah. goodness I had like three helpings I was like uh, my stomach kind of hurts now but it's all right I'll live he made it he made yeah, it no, yeah yeah <laughs> he made it by hand. crock pot crock pot <laughs> <laughs> six hours oh my goodness. oh that's another story oh see now you're now you're bringing back all these mm-hmm. things when I was in short season our clubby would actually crock pot chicken. All the time. And we would have to rush in. He would get the – because he would buy the, all the meals mm-hmm. and everything like that. I don't think it was – we didn't have any nutritionists with Miami. So when we were in Batavia, New York, he would have two Costco, like, whole chickens. And people would be flying into the clubhouse after BP just to get, like, one of the legs so that they couldn't – you were so lucky if you got uh-huh. one of the legs. And then there would be buffalo chicken, crock pot, fruit, and all this stuff. The worst part about it is it all be set out and there would just be flies on it. <laughs> It'd be just gross. You didn't and cover you, it? No, he didn't really cover it. Smart. So it it, it was what it was. <laughs> I there there was a lot of peanut butter and jelly and uh, a lot of different stuff. So what the level was this? Low A? No, this was below low A. This was short season. Oh. So this was like. Do you, do you remember the levels? What they were? Okay, so you had well, rookie, uh, yeah, rookie rookie ball, which was the FCL, uh-huh. still a thing. Then you had short season, mm-hmm. which was Batavia, New York, for uh, the Miami Marlins, and then you had low A, 
which at that point was Clinton, Iowa. Iowa. Oh, I've heard Clinton, stories. Yep, Clinton, Iowa. And then there was Jupiter, which was high A. Then double A, which was Jacksonville at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then triple A was New Orleans. And then okay. – um, so essentially, there were seven levels, mm-hmm. and when you were at the bottom, you were at the bottom. Yeah. And that was before my signing bonus hit. So I was a I was a broke college kid. I had probably thousand bucks in my account. So I was like Whoa. I was like I don't know if I can I don't know if I can spend this ten dollars. You know, <laughs> 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 my first paycheck two weeks. My first paycheck was two forty nine. Yeah. Oh, wow. Two hundred and forty nine dollars. Wow. Okay. For two weeks of work. Mm. I was in, that was incredible, and so. I had to eat the food there, but, yeah. you know, they've done such a great job. And like I said, with you, you've done such a great job of taking care of us. And especially at the AAA level, I well, feel like I am I can go out there and I can perform every day because of what you do. Well, I, I appreciate that. And it's, it's funny because I feel like I'm one of the youngest clubbies around because a lot of the clubbies I talk to, at least home guys, are 40, 40 plus. Yeah, you are. You're not 40. <laughs> no, stop it. Stop it. 39? Uh, a little lower. Oh, 38. Ah. Gotcha. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in your 20s, aren't you? 25. You're 25? Mm-hmm. God, I'm old. What are you, 28? 27. Give me a break. Oh, brother. 25. The things I would do to wake up and feel 25 again. You know what? <laughs> I, I See, that's the thing about the age. What Scott, what age do you feel? Well, how old are you, Scott? I'm 33. Okay. I don't know. I feel my age. I feel good. You feel 33. Yeah, I feel good. Not quite as you know, in good shape as I was. Thank you to my kids for that, for sleeping oh, and waking up at five a.m. every day. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I feel I feel good. I feel happy. Good. I feel healthy for the most part. You, yeah. you look good. So do you. I appreciate I it. I wish you'd yeah. grow your beard back out, but that's okay. Is that I want not it, a I want it bushy. A little bit. I want it bushy. You want it bushy? I want, I want it like me? a mountain man. You, on the other hand, I'm growing it a little bit. Yeah, you got some. You got some side pieces coming. I know. In. That's you might. You're like the goatee. You're like. I got to get that beard roller. Dude, I saw that. I thought about it, but I think it'll pop up on a drug test for me. So <laughs> I don't think I could take it. Yeah, that guy's a hawk, but, too. No, but see, <laughs> he is a hawk. Uh, see, that's the thing with me is, like, I wake up and I see 27, but in my mind, I'm like, ah, I'm 23 still. 23. Ah. I just feel 23. And then all of a sudden, so everybody's like, you know, you see a guy on Twitter. Hey, he's 27. He's washed. He's old. I'm like, God, I'm 27. Ah, right on the cusp of 30. <laughs> Dirty thirties. No, you you guys are in, you guys are in great shape. You being being where you're at. Twenties yeah. is awesome. Is it? It is. Okay. It's like you're you know, and you're, you're a hope. perfect example like of how you. We talked about your journey earlier. How you have like built your career to get to this mm-hmm. point where you you just said every other clubby in this league that you deal with is in their forties or above, which yeah. I think is true. And all of a sudden, here you are at twenty five. I mean, you're like. For, for if you're using a baseball ana- analogy and broadcasting similar, right? Like everybody in the major leagues is super older, but if you're 25 doing this, you're like 18. Like you're just <laughs> fresh. Like this top prospect who's already made. Yeah, like way fresh up. legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's are impressive. you are a top prospect at this point. I guess so. Mm-hmm. What, what would you rank yourself, top prospect out of 30? Because you know it goes by 30. Top five at least. Ooh. <laughs> I'd put you up there. I'd put you. Oh, up. I'd, I'd you. go top thirty, but that's right. That's just me being biased. But let back, I'm going to backtrack a little bit to what okay. you were originally talking about is um, my relationship with Brownie and the coaching staff. We really went off on a little tangent there off of that. Which that's what podcasts cool. are for? Yeah, I love it. Actually, <laughs> it's my first time. Cameras. Everybody right. remembers their first time. And uh, it was funny because. I go down to spring training, and I'm like a scared little puppy walking in that clubhouse, obviously taking on such a big role. And I'm like, hi, I'm Christian. I'm the new clubhouse manager. Can I get your pants size? Like, all that stuff. And Peyton Burdick, I'll never remember. Oh, <laughs> never brother. Forget. Your guys' relationship yeah. is hilarious. He goes, look at this guy. He's begging for everyone's pants size or something like <laughs> It's like just like a Burdick comment. Yeah. He's like, ease up, buddy. It's going to be okay. It's a long season. And I was like, well, shout out, Burdick. Great guy. I hope you're doing well, but brother. <laughs> but, yeah. And uh, But I just will never forget that, that I walked in first time just so nervous. It was crazy. It, it really was because then I realized in this line of work, you can be yourself. You can joke. You can have fun. And... Mm, 
Ooh, Excuse water? Me. More water? Yes, I think so. All right, so. water break. Eighth inning stretch. Everybody get it. Sorry, in. Jesus. Eighth inning stretch. Mm. Oh, my goodness. It was on the – It was. I could hear it. You heard it. Oh, that? my God. Yeah. <sighs> but you still go about your business. <laughs> right back into it. Yeah. <laughs> right back to it. <laughs> you go about your business, but you have fun with it. So that's what I really love about this job. And those three – the three guys in particular you asked about, Brandy, JP, Colby, I mean, those guys, they let you do that, which mm -hmm. is awesome. To oh, you yeah. guys, too. But, yeah, that, that, is, that is super, super mm -hmm. cool. I'm presuming, I, I don't know if you want to name names besides Burdick, who is hilarious. <laughs> are there players that I'm sure there are that you develop as like, man, this, I love working with this guy mm -hmm. because of X, Y, and Z. Do you have favorites at, at all? Um, besides Troy? Yeah. No, I don't play favorites. I try to treat everyone the same. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's tough because – some guys are more personable than others. So if you got an outgoing guy and then I bond with him because I consider myself an outgoing person, then that relationship builds off one another. You know what I mean? But if someone's more of an introvert, I'm not going to press them. You know, they're here to do a job. I'm, by, I'm not here to make friends at the end of the day. Like, it's nice to build relationships and develop friendships. But the, at, the, at the end of the day, they're here to do a job and – Try to make it to the big leagues. So, what about guys who don't speak much English? Even at this <laughs> level, oh, we still. I'm sorry. No, no, go for it. Go for it, <laughs> please. Even at this level, you still have that. Yeah. And what do you do to communicate with those guys? Oh, I try to speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Which I'm not very good at. But normally, there's at least. Troy, what would you say? One to two. Guys that are bilingual that are pretty good at it. I would say at this level, a lot of them are bilingual. I would yeah. say there's only two or three that do not speak mm -hmm. much English, and if they do, it's like based on like, "Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Good." Like you know how we would speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them are bilingual, and it's. I learned this from Mesa. Mesa learned English because a majority of his family doesn't speak English, but he said he learned English from watching um, Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, from watching really? Netflix and like re the subtitles and everything like that. And I'm like, that is so cool. I'm gonna start doing that. Well, Mesa's but, English is good. Yeah, and it's gotten so much better. Yeah. I remember because of course I've been playing with him since um, we got drafted, signed together, and I remember his English being. Better than others, especially at the lower levels, but now it is excelled. It is mm -hmm. unbelievable. And I see that a lot at the AAA level. There's a lot of guys that have been around quite a bit, and they've yeah. been in the States, and they understand English. They can speak English and do all that. So it really hasn't been too much of a problem. There's mm -hmm. only a couple yeah. here or there. But I think that you yeah. would be – I think that would be really beneficial for yeah, you I mean, to I'm learn Spanish. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to. I'm trying to learn it. Me too. Duolingo? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just talking with the guys. This is not sponsored. This is not sponsored yeah. by Duolingo. <laughs> but if you want to sponsor us, Duolingo, hit us up. Uh, we are turned <laughs> to with Scott and Troy. <laughs> I thought you guys were going to have me do a segment like uh, whatever they do on some of the podcasts. Right. Nosotros <laughs> uh, hablas español hoy. Uh, Christian O'Kelly, ¿cómo está? Mm, bien. Todo bien? Ooh, all right. Bien. Perfect. Yeah, en español. Is, uh, yeah. No, but kind of like what Troy and I just did, passing talk, and then when I actually need something from them, I'll call someone over, translate. Who's your, <laughs> who's your go-to translator? Um, Chirinos is pretty good. Emmanuel Ramirez is pretty good, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Pareda, Pareda. Pareda's good, too, yeah. yeah. And it was Mesa. And Devers. Devers is really good, too. Yeah. So. I got one more for you. Yeah. So... When you got into this, it happens right after MLB kind of reshuffles the way the clubhouse mm -hmm. system kind of works. So you didn't get the old model, but from what I understand, and, and I do not want you to get into details of this uh, beyond like the, the basics, but there's a grading system, I think, mm -hmm. for every team that, that comes in. You know, we, we go to Louisville next week, and they'll ask Brownie, you know, all these different yeah. questions, and he'll fill out a survey about what it's like there, just like – the visiting team does here, just like I'm presuming are, is done on even our home guys at times. So, like, what is that grading system like? What are some things that you want to make sure that you're doing well to, to score well in that? So it's a grading scale out of five. Okay. I have not seen a home one, so I'm not sure. All fives. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd hope so. <laughs> out of tens. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what is that, 50%? Yeah, 50%. Mm-hmm. You're batting 500 at that yeah. point. You're pretty good. Half the people Five are happy. Ten, yeah. It's a hell of a hitter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, 
No, but it's basically off cleanliness. Most of it is. Shower rooms, food room, clubhouse amenities, what's provided. Training room, is there a manager's office, coach's office, dugout, stuff like that. What's provided for them on per our, the PDL agreement, obviously the basic stuff. And then there's comment sections for if <clears throat> if we go above and beyond. So I'm happy to say that so far, my guys down the visiting clubhouse have done a really good job from what I've heard. So Shout out TK. Yeah. Yeah. For your, your staff you mm -hmm. talked about earlier, and again, I want to echo what Troy just said earlier. They do an amazing job. This is not – you You lead them. I mean, mm -hmm. that is, is a huge part of the credit, but you can't be everywhere at yeah, once. Yeah, exactly. And One person, two legs. How do you find people <laughs> – because this is such an unknown world, how do you find people who, I mean, A, like want to do this and, and B, are able to contribute mm -hmm. and, and understand like kind of the guidelines of working with professional athletes? So – Everyone that I've hired, except for Brendan, I played baseball with. Mm, at really? Flagler. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So they all have an idea of the game and locker room, clubhouse kind of stuff. So taking baseball players, putting them in a baseball setting, not that hard. Brendan, on the other hand, loves the game, was an intern like I was, and emailed upper management asking for a position. I met him, hired him, and he's been my right hand man since. So it's basically, you know, I uh, I haven't gone outside too much. All of them have been my friends and former teammates and guys that I hang out with in the off season and off weeks. So golfing buddies, stuff like that. So everyone down there is, you know, a personal friend of mine. God, nepotism really is real. Huh? <laughs> God, I really did not think it was real. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you brought up one more thing, and the off season. You are you are paid by the Marlins seasonally, mm -hmm. so your job starts in March. It'll run through the end of the season, end of September ish. What do you do in the off season? So, um, I'll work in. Th I'll work through usually November up here. Um, in October, I'll get the whole clubhouse cleaned. I'll get all the equipment, lug it do back down to Jupiter at the spring training complex, drop it off down there. The ass they'll assess all the equipment for obviously next year. But the past three years, I've been coaching at my alum, Flagler College. Just a volunteer assistant. I'll make money from camp money, and I'll um, help out the pitching staff because I was a pitcher in college. So I really enjoy that. Um, this offseason, I'm also going to take up lessons uh, my buddy, he just opened a facility with Trackman, Rapsodo, all the good stuff. So I'm going to plan on getting into lessons. And wow. What's the name of that facility so you can name drop them? Oh, yeah. It's uh, Catalyst Fitness Lab. Ooh, all right. Catalyst I, Fitness yeah, Lab. Yeah, we were taking donations yes. of $50 per <laughs> session, per yeah, name drop. Catalyst Athletic Training and Fitness Lab, I believe it is. It's in St. Augustine, Florida. Not even sure if I'm allowed to do that, but I just did it. And here, we are. <laughs> <laughs> here we are. You guys are now uh, on turn two with uh, Scott and Troy. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, inter interesting that you. I did not know that you do lessons and you you still are so wrapped up in the game of baseball. Yeah, it's it's uh, what you know being a coach at, Fl at Flagler. Mm -hmm. Like, what is your philosophy? I guess of pitching. Everybody has a different philosophy. I got one for hitting. I got one for pitching. Uh -huh. um, what is yours when, that you're preaching other than maybe even what Flagler preaches of what uh -huh. their philosophy is? Well, it's a little different because I look at what goes on at this level, AAA, with professionals. And when I try to go down to these 18-year-olds that are new in the game, my biggest thing is attack the zone, attack these hitters. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want you uh, – Throwing, I want you to be able to land breaking balls for strikes on 0 counts. I want you to be able to um, locate a two-tap fastball in the outer half or show up, show down. If you're going to go north, make sure you get it back down south. You know, if you're a righty, especially in this league, if you're going up against a lefty hitter, I expect you to have a good uh, change, stuff like that. Um, that's kind of my, my biggest thing is just to 
command all your pitches and being able to attack the zone because you're never going to be successful if you throw balls. You're not wrong. That's <laughs> that's really straight up and very clear of what you're talking about. How many of those 18, 19 year olds actually do that? Okay. Now, it's more the twenty. <laughs> it's more the it's more the 22 to 23 year olds. Because I I'm not gonna lie. There was when I was in college. Of course, I went to Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. um, but there was like two or three guys that I was like, oh my god, this I've never seen pitching like this. This uh -huh. is incredible. And then of course you got the other guys that are definitely yeah. high school, mm -hmm. just got out and you know barely on the cusp. Yeah, like but it, there's just a fine line between it because I got guys that come in and you know they had their uh, their sub three or their sub point three ERA in high school where they pitched a hundred innings and struck out a hundred. You know what I mean? Like yes. unreal years. Yes. They come in and it's a bit of a reality check. They're yes. like, okay, I'm not the best player on the field anymore. Mm -hmm. I got the guys that come in that, you know, their 88 isn't blowing guys away anymore. Their 88 middle middle is now getting hit 380 feet. You, you yeah. know what I mean? You know what yes. I mean? So I, 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 there's a fine line where, you know, it, it now it's gone from not being able to just throw the ball wherever you want and get guys out to now fine tuning pitches and sequences and also deciding you know what type of pitcher you are because at the end of the day I have guys that come in that think they have four or five pitches and in reality a, a good pitcher has two plus a third right yes 100 percent. so wow you I underestimated you why you did you think I was just a glorified laundry man <laughs> oh my <laughs> no not at all when you said you were a volunteer assistant you're doing all this stuff I'm like I'm like okay great like I've seen volunteer assistants I get it and they but that is so clear defined, so clear cut mm -hmm. that I'm like, I want you to be my pitching coach. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, and that okay. So this that brings me to my next question: okay. Do you have any desire and or drive to become an actual coach and not just a volunteer assistant, yeah. but actually do that full time? You know, I, that is like it's like a passion of mine. I love coaching, but the problem is, and it it all boils down to this: in any job is money. And it, at the college level, there's just not a lot of money in it, um, yeah. especially at the level I'm at. And from people I've talked to, you know, I, I I know people that were coaching since just like me. They got out of college, started coaching at 23, and they're now 28, 30 years old, and they're still in the same bottom barrel. In the, and I, Hey, I, say it to my face. <laughs> 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 oh, deuce. Uh, for all the listeners out there – Troy Johnson's number is two, hence Deuce. That's hence why I call him, around, call him around the clubhouse. Yeah. Shout out to Jonah for telling yes. everybody numbers, <laughs> numbers calling yes. them by numbers and not names. Yes. But yeah, back to your question is, of course, I'd want to take that route of coaching and do that. But I, I just got to make sure I'm also financially stable in the end, too, because that's the ultimate goal is happiness and financial stability. That's, I mean, and that's why I kind of really am enjoying my job right now is I'm being 25, uh, single, um, not much responsibility, like other than my bills and my dog at home to, I'm able to work these long hours and, you know, put my body and, you know, the stress I put my physical and mental through to be a clubhouse guy, which, uh, obviously we talked earlier about what all we do and thank you for the respect you have for us and you as well. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's one of those things where I'm able to do that right now. And, but who says down the line, I want to be, you know, 45 years old doing it. Yeah, who who knows where life's going to take me, but right now I'm happy where I'm at. And if the coaching route works out, maybe player development works out. I've heard stories of Ooh, clubhouse yeah. guys working into the video side of things or player development side of things on uh, the professional side of baseball. You really never know where what, what uh, turn you're going to take in life. And right now I'm just living kind of day by day and, you know, enjoying it and trying to work hard. And, yeah. I love it. That's a great answer. That is a great answer. I would like to point out that the whole the whole first half of this podcast, I had that little thing in my throat. <laughs> I t yeah, it was your you beard You still had good answers. I had good answers. I just kept... <clears throat> <clears throat> but this past, like, 15 minutes, it went away. I would like also to highlight that I drank the whole bottle of water. Hey! So that maybe was... Stay hydrated. Maybe, yeah, I was going to say, maybe you're just not hydrated. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, that was, maybe when that you were, was really weird, though. When you when you got in at, like, I don't know, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., you started opening and cracked a beer already? No. Nope. I, no. I'm on three hours of sleep, <laughs> and yeah, but I'm glad I was able to come out and do this, and all the viewers out there, sorry about that. Ignore it, but... I promise you, they're not going to care. They're not going to. They care. want now that you said something about it, they might care. Yeah. Uh, but before that, before that, they wouldn't care. Of broadcasting is that just, just act like it, it didn't happen? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm learning. 
I'm learning. First one. Now you're now you're ready for your next yes. podcast whenever it happens. Yeah. Well, Christian, thank you so much for being with us today. Cool. Like I said, we have so much respect for you and your yeah. staff and what Absolutely. you guys do. Thank you so much for telling us your story mm -hmm. and essentially how it relates to baseball and our everyday life. We thank you so much for coming on. You have been a great guest. Thank you. Again, this has been Turn 2 with Scott and Troy. We'll see you guys next week, I think. I think we'll see you next week. Weeks. Couple, Couple weeks. Couple weeks. Yep. Mm -hmm. After that, you can catch us on YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcast. Wherever yes. you get your podcast. There You're you much better at that than I am. <laughs> That's okay. You're, you're pretty great. <laughs> well, th thank you, guys. This thank is you. awesome. Really, guys. I want to echo that. Yes, you thank tremendous. you, guys. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yep. <laughs>